Welcome back, Twisters, and hey there, hockey fans. Nick here, and today I'm going to be talking about the decline in San Jose Sharks season ticket sales as a recent article has surfaced from Curtis Pichelka of the Mercury News, the San Jose Mercury News. He just spoke with Sharks president Jonathan Becker about this conundrum here. The Sharks are experiencing a decline in season ticket sales heading into this next season and have been experiencing such a decline over the past several seasons. So I want to look at this article. I also want to put this into context because the San Jose Sharks have had issues recently with the city of San Jose and a proposed project to bring a Google campus into that part of downtown San Jose. So we're going to talk about all of that. This is behind a paywall typically, but I do have access to this article uh, through this account here. So I'm going to read through this and provide some commentary. Curtis Pichelka does a very good job of covering the Sharks. So the headline reads, uh, Shark season ticket sales take a hit after consecutive down years. So the 2019-20 season and the 2020-21 season were down years for San Jose. Uh, subheader reads, San Jose Sharks president Jonathan Becker says the franchise has sold about 9,000 season tickets or equivalents. So like combining two half season plans for next season down from 10,500 in 2019. The San Jose Sharks anticipate having the ability to host capacity crowds next season, but it may be a long time before every seat at SAP Center is filled on a regular basis again. The Sharks' poor on-ice performance the last two years, combined with other factors out of their control, aka COVID, has led to a notable decline in the team's season ticket sales for the upcoming season. Sharks sports and entertainment president Jonathan Becker said the franchise to date has sold roughly 9,000 season tickets or equivalents for next season, a decrease of about 1,500 from two years ago when the team was coming off an appearance in the Western Conference Final. So the team makes a deep playoff run in 2019, and then they experience a drop-off of about 1,500 season tickets leading into this upcoming season couple things to consider. First of all, that 10,500 from 2019, it's going to be a little bit higher as I talk about years prior, number one. And number two, um, do account that the Sharks are not done renewing season tickets for this upcoming season. They could still acquire new season ticket holders. So I do want to put that into context. Becker said season tickets are renewing at about 84%, a rate similar to other years when the Sharks did not perform well on the ice. The Sharks missed the playoffs for the second consecutive year this season, marking the first time since the mid-1990s that, that the team has been out of the postseason in back-to-back -back years. So we're talking about nearly 25 years or so in which this team has really experienced a slump. Becker said the Sharks' average rate of season ticket renewal for the last five years was in the 85-88% to 88 range. So this past season, we're looking at an 84% renewal, so that drop-off is actually fairly minimal. However, that does stack up when you look at year-over-year -year declines. The Sharks have seen season ticket sales decline over the last decade. And think about that, too. This team has been largely very competitive in the last 20 years, you could say. In 2012, packed houses at the team's 17,562-seat downtown arena were the norm as the Sharks had approximately 14,000 season ticket holders. So we have seen a decline of as much as 5,000 season ticket holders in less than a decade. While this team has been in the conference finals and has made a Stanley Cup final run, while this team has attracted Eric Carlson, Brent Burns, you know, you talk about marketable players, right? So it's quite interesting to see a, a, that steep of a drop off in just a short period of time. And you think of San Jose, right? Probably the most expensive city to live in the country outside of San Francisco when it comes purely to base rent. New York competes for that as well. So you would think that people would be able to shell out the big bucks to afford the season tickets. However, what, this, what the underlying point here is that you have a contingency of fans who are buying tickets based on a win and loss record. And then you also have people who aren't going to spend that year over year. They have to, it's an investment to be buying season tickets for a competitive club when you don't make $200,000 a year as a software engineer. That's literally how much people in San Jose make in that sort of profession. So it's telling you that those 14,000 season ticket holders that you had you know, years ago, they're not the same kind of people who could buy an island or something like that. Now, to me, this is where it gets interesting, okay? 
Becker added that some former full season ticket holders this year have opted to purchase half season plans instead, and that a major reason for the team's erosion in sales has been people moving out of the Bay Area. I think that that is right on the nose. I myself, last year, I moved out of the Bay Area. I live here in North Idaho. It is beautiful and way, way more affordable. So speaking from personal experience, I see it as this, okay? You had people who wanted a more affordable lifestyle than what the Bay Area was presenting. You have people who want to have a family or own property or something like that. And unless you're, again, in a software engineering field or a financial field, right? This That's not the same career path for everybody, even though San Jose is a very affluent city. So these are the people who picked up and left, who said, I, I just can't, you know, it, it sucks to leave behind my sharks, but I need to sacrifice that for a better way of life. And so that's why they got out of the Bay Area. So that's, that's people like myself. He added that prices did not go up for roughly 90% of season ticket holders as their purchases from 2020, 2021, rolled over into the upcoming season. And I believe him because I was a half season ticket holder for two years and those rates I think remain stagnant. If anything, they might've gone up by like two bucks. Um, the Sharks actually have one of the more affordable ticket prices in the NHL. That's what's crazy. That's what a lot of people don't actually realize. I think that maybe the corporate level stuff is a lot higher priced, but in terms of the average person going into the arena, the Sharks actually have a higher, or excuse me, have a lower ticket price than a lot of other clubs that you think would be below them. And again, San Jose is the most expensive American city to live in out of any of these NHL teams. Becker said the Sharks have seen a recent uptick in sales as renewals were at 79 or 80% in mid-May. So they've gone up since then, probably closer to that 84% that he alluded to earlier. That leads him to believe that, quote, it might grow a bit from there as people miss hockey even more and want to see it in person. I think that makes sense there. So again, 9,000 uh, season ticket holders right now. That number could be at least 95, maybe 10,000 or so um, as we get into October. So definitely want to uh, acknowledge that. After the Sharks made the Stanley Cup final in 2016, season ticket sales jumped by about 2,500 with new subscribers accounting for 70% of that number. I think that that figure is very interesting because just two seasons before that, the Sharks had been reverse swept in the first round and they failed to make the playoffs the next year. That was when you really started noticing a decline in fan enthusiasm for the Sharks. There were still plenty of people who were passionate about the team, but that didn't translate to ticket sales. And so then the team has this miraculous rebound and fan interest goes up. So 70% was new season ticket holders. 30% of that then would be people who were not season ticket holders in 2015-16, but had been season ticket holders prior. So in other words, you could say that a lot of those people who had dropped off or had dropped off as a result of that reverse sweep and then came back into the fold when the Sharks were able to get a competitive club on the ice again. Then there's a section about the impact of COVID-19 on the Sharks, and I could talk about that a little bit. I think that's a bit of a separate beast, though. The idea here is that the Sharks do expect to have large crowds. I don't know about full capacity, but they do, or Becker says, uh, by about January next year. And he says that, yeah, sure, there, there's going to be a percentage of fans who are still reluctant to come to the games. So I could talk about that a little bit. But nonetheless, in terms of getting people, getting that fan enthusiasm back for this upcoming season, it just hasn't quite been there, even though some do miss hockey. But now I'm going to talk about my own kind of personal commentary here. So as you can tell here, wins and losses are definitely having an impact on the Sharks' ability to retain season ticket holders. So again, dropping from 14,000 to 9,000 in less than a decade, that is huge. I already talked about as well, the exodus of people out of the Bay Area. There have been statistics that have indicated that the number of people coming in is now outweighed by the number of people leaving. So that is absolutely a factor as well. So now I'm gonna bring one other point into the fold here and that's the city of San Jose and the San Jose Sharks. So as you may recall uh, later, or excuse me, earlier last year and also into this year, there were some disagreements between the city of San Jose and the San Jose Sharks regarding a Google campus development in downtown San Jose, really close to SAP Center. So basically the Sharks had written a letter to the fans saying, th this is last year, they felt that the team might have to explore other options instead of playing at SAP Center because this 
Uh, Google Campus is coming in and that's gonna create some problems as it pertains to parking, as it pertains to you know traffic and infrastructure and that sort of thing. The Sharks lease of SAP Center expires in 2025. And as we know, the future does not look particularly bright for this team. They have veteran contracts that won't expire for another several seasons. Players like Eric Carlson will still be getting paid when the Sharks lease is up in 2025, $11.5 million. So the team is not necessarily going to be able to field a playoff caliber team consistently and get that season ticket holder base to rise. Now let's also consider factors like people moving out of the Bay Area. Let's consider factors like people not being able to get to the games as easily because this Google campus, I mean, it's going to create even more traffic around the area. That area isn't fully developed technically. There are some plots of land. I used to live over there, by the way, um, that are vacant or hadn't been developed for years. And now they're gonna be developed. Uh, there's an article from NBC Sports that says, 4,000 housing units are gonna be part of this plan. Uh, but of course, when that happens, then that means that the price of land is going to increase. And so people are probably going to be displaced. Now the Sharks had alluded to the idea of maybe suing the city of San Jose or even Google, but they withdrew from that after a settlement was agreed that's going to free up 2,800 parking spaces at the public transit hub right by SAP Center called Diridon Station. However, I don't think that that's going to solve everything because you're still going to have problems with traffic. You know, the Bay Area, like the West Coast in general, doesn't have much in the way of public transit. So fans who want to come to the games, they have to drive. I mean, there aren't that many options for them to get from, let's say, uh, Union City or Hayward down to San Jose because there's no BART station down there just yet. So what I see here is just a confluence of various issues for the Sharks, a poorly performing team, an infrastructure problem that I think is going to turn a lot of fans off from coming to the games. You already have teams like the 49ers and the Earthquakes in the vicinity as well. So that has only created more competition as they've received new venues in the last you know several years as well. And then you couple this with uh, things like just people wanting to get out of the Bay Area in general. And so in my opinion, the Sharks are in jeopardy. I really think that they are. Uh, they're not going to you know, move out next year, but if they don't get at least a competitive club on the ice in the next couple of years, I frankly could see this becoming worse and worse. And the thing is, is that the city of San Jose is obviously going to allow a development project like this Google one because it's going to bring in some money. However, despite doing that, that doesn't necessarily affect the culture of the area in a way that's going to increase interest in the Sharks. You also have to look at the cultural impact of this as well. So the city of San Jose, in my opinion, has done very little to publicly display their support for the Sharks. When you compare them to other NHL cities in non-traditional markets, places like Vegas and Nashville, and as we saw in North Carolina and Raleigh for the Hurricanes, you don't see that same level of enthusiasm from the city of San Jose and the South Bay overflowing for the Sharks. When when they went to the Stanley Cup final in 2016, I saw one banner hanging from a skyscraper there, and that was it. You know, normally on game days, you can see some signage on, uh, you know, street uh, street lamps and some like flags and whatnot on San Pedro Square, which is a little strip there in uh, downtown San Jose. But other than that, even though there are many, many, many people like myself who bleed teal and show our colors, wear our colors, um, on a frequent basis, that doesn't really spill over into, I guess, the overall identity of the city. The identity of the city has been, for the last 15 years or so, one that is rooted in enterprise and not in a common cultural factor, like sports would be one, music would be one, if you want to talk about Seattle in the late 80s, early 90s, or something like you know, take a look at Pittsburgh, right, where it was the steel industry that had united it because steel was a, the steel industry united the common person, right, common people together. Whereas here in San Jose, you have enterprises and you have others. The others are the people who are struggling to make ends meet out there in what is one of the most expensive cities in the country. The others are the folks who have dropped off this season ticket holder base because the team isn't doing well 
and they've been pushed out of the Bay Area. So anyway, I know my thoughts are a little incoherent here, but I think that this team, this franchise is spiraling downwards. And I think things are going to get very dire in the next couple of years if this team doesn't at least put something on the ice. And if the San- the city of San Jose doesn't publicly do something to get more people interested in the San Jose Sharks. If they could do something along the lines of what Vegas has done or along the lines of even Nashville, Raleigh, you could say maybe, I think this team could maybe stay afloat. But frankly, I just don't see that happening. And it sucks to say that having you know grown up uh, close by and gone to Sharks games and been a half season ticket holder, um, I do think that the future looks bleak. I, I do. Uh, this is just a another wound um, in in the fan base, in my opinion. And so I don't really know what else to say. But of course, I welcome your feedback down in the comments below. This drop in season ticket holders, do you think that that's going to continue to, to drop? Do you see it maybe leveling out if the team's able to play a little bit better? And how do you think this kind of factors in with what I just talked about regarding the city of San Jose the Google campus and the San Jose Sharks opposition to that before they reached the settlement. Anyway, let me know down in the comments below. Thank you for sticking with me through this one. I know it was quite long, but I really wanted to put all these factors into a unifying narrative here. And we will uh, probably be following this a little bit through next season and beyond. Hopefully the situation gets better, but um, there's a reason why there are less butts in the stands at SAP Center. That's plain and simple. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Once again, my name is Nick. I'll catch you twisters later. Ciao.